I think to begin with with CVs, going to the um, career service at the university is a really good place to start. They can advise you on best practice, what a good CV looks like, and they'll also be able to give you a template so you can begin to fill in the different sections rather than starting from scratch with a blank page, which can be pretty daunting. So the best way to prepare your CV is to decide on a format. Make sure it's structured, keep it concise, you don't need to go over two pages um, and remember that you're applying for a graduate role, so keep your education and your skills at the top of your CV. To prepare for a CV, um, I would start with research. I would look um, at the company that you are applying for, um, the role that you're interested in. This um, allows you to figure out whether the company is actually right for you um, and whether the role itself is also something that you are truly interested in doing. Also understanding your target order, audience, so if you are going for um, a creative industry or a corporate industry you can tailor your CV appropriately. I would recommend trying to write your CV from somebody else's perspective talking about yourself. If you're uncomfortable talking about what you did or saying I am this person and I have this experience. Try and be as objective as possible and talk about yourself as another person and you can always change the pronouns later. Um, your CV should be approximately two pages long. If it's too short um, you might be lacking detail. Um, if it's too long it kind of makes us beg the question is all of this relevant? Um, it's also very overwhelming when um, at, at Main Freight we receive thousands of CVs a year, so we want to be able to um, look at your CV um, and kind of get a, a snapshot of you without having to go too in depth and read between the lines really. At EY you have to appreciate that we have over two and a half thousand applications per year. So we like to see about two pages worth of information on your CV. So being succinct but then also providing the detail and context that we need to really understand who you are. So uh, it's a really key uh, thing to get your CV the right length. Somewhere between one to two pages is kind of ideal. If you're trying to squeeze it all into one, it might look a bit cluttered and really hard to read, um, but two's kind of a good size, especially at the graduate level. We don't expect um, CVs from, from students to be any longer than two pages. Um, I've definitely seen some longer ones and um, I think it's important to keep it really clear, concise um, and with all the relevant information. So no more than two pages, maximum being about three. At the beginning of a student's CV, I really like to see a short personal statement just to capture in a snapshot who you are, your experiences from each of the different areas of your life and then also finally what you're looking for in a role and in a company. So yeah, that's an important part to me. So a personal statement career objective, I, I think with anything, it really does come down to you, but it's something you need to keep up to date and make sure that it still aligns with what you're looking to do with your career. You're looking for aligns with what the company you're applying to can give you. Um, if you're applying to be an engineer at an accounting firm um, and that's in your objective, you're probably not going to get far along the process. So we don't ask that you um, include a personal statement or a career objective on your CV. Um, this is kind of a case by case and it's more um, whether you feel that that's relevant on your CV. Um, so for example, if you know exactly where you want to be in three to five years time and you've got a really clear vision of how to get there, then it's really good to put that on. Um, also, sometimes a personal summary can be good to get a feel for that person's personality. Um, but again, it's not, um, it's not a prerequisite for us. I think your personal statement should rather be included in your cover letter. Your cover letter and your CV are two separate documents. Your CV should be focusing on the facts, so again, your work experiences and educational history. No, definitely not. Um, we don't ask for a specific skills section on a CV, and the reason is we would rather see how you apply those skills, so be that through your application questions or how you represent that through a cover letter and um, we would rather see that incorporated rather than kind of a list of bullet points um, of skills. I would suggest a technical skills section, so if you are studying um, a degree in computer science or information systems, it's really important to list those skills, so whether it's the type of languages you've studied, coding systems, databases, 
definitely, but please don't include a personal attributes or competency based list. Rather try and incorporate those competencies in the body of your work experience. So for example, if you think you're a problem solver, tell us about how you solved the problem at work, what impact it might have had on the business and your role. Yes. So it's important to remember that an interviewer sometimes will only review your CV in about five to seven seconds. So you want to keep your CV very structured. Um, absolutely, if you've got technical skills, list them separately from your soft skills. I think a separate skills section, if done well, can help you stand out from the crowd. Uh, Deloitte get about 3,000 graduate applications during their graduate period, so you need to be able to stand out. Um, but make sure there's skills that do make you stand out. So if you have a special skill in a technology or something that's different to just your run of the mill attention to detail and communication, I think bullet point, you know, two, uh, sort of three or four of your top skills um, are good to kind of draw the eye of the recruiter and go, okay, this person's got something we'd like and we want to pursue further. Each CV is different, but if you have skills that are relevant to the role, um, definitely put it in there. So for example, if you had um, a forklift license and very good numerical skills, um, I would definitely put that on um, your CV. For us, it would highlight that you might be a good candidate for our logistics division, but make sure that they are backed up with the examples, otherwise um, it just kind of looks like you're putting it on there for the sake of putting it on there. In terms of the layout of the CV, I prefer to see things in chronological order or in um, different sections according to your voluntary experience, your education and your work experience. A skills section isn't necessarily important to me. Um, I like to see them woven into the different areas of your life that you're talking about. However, if you're more comfortable in breaking that out separately, then that's up to you. You have creative control on this one. So in terms of listing your referees, if it's someone um, that's potentially known to the business and would be somebody that the business would respect in that field, then absolutely, because that could be the reason you get through to an interview. Um, otherwise, there's no requirement to do so. Deloitte wouldn't contact your references until you'd actually been offered the role. Um, and at that time, because you need to make sure your referees are happy to be a referee for you, so we'd ask you to check with them and then we'd make contact. Um, it's definitely not um, necessary to list your referees on a CV. In KPMG's process, we um, would contact you later on down the line if we do need those details. You don't need to list your referees, just say referees available upon request. My top three tips with CVs would be to begin with the careers service. There's no point struggling on your own when they're the experts. So go and get some advice from them, go and get a template from them and, and start there. Secondly, I would advise that you include hard facts um, in your CV that focus on the results of what you've achieved. So for example, if you have bullet points under each of your work experiences or voluntary experiences, I want you to list what you did, how you did it and why you did it. So the why is the result and that's the part that students often miss out. We're looking for the impact that you personally delivered so we can imagine the impact that you're going to be able to deliver in a role with us. Finally, um, I think you should be quite quantitative in the, the results that you give. So really bring to life the story that you're trying to tell. So talk to me about the percentage cost savings that you delivered or how much money you raised for your voluntary charity work. We like to see stories with detail and that will set you apart from other students. We see two and a half thousand during our campaign. So go into the detail and give us facts and figures that we can use to really remember you and understand you with. Um, so three other things for a successful CV. Um, so one thing for me personally is I think it's really important when you are applying for a graduate or an intern position to put your education um, as further up on the front of your CV as you can because um, it's really clear for a recruiter then to see you know who you are, what you're studying, things like that. Um, I would definitely also recommend um, putting as much detail on there about work experience, voluntary, extracurriculars, clubs, societies, anything you've been involved in, um, no de all detail is good, so there's no detail that will be detrimental to your CV. Um, we like to see your hobbies and your interests, um, so this kind of gives us a little bit more understanding about who you are and what you like to get up to outside of work or what you like to get outside of uh, university. 
Um, I would definitely get somebody to look over your CV. So proofreading is really, really critical. Uh, grammar and spelling um, is, a, is a critical part of CV writing. Um, as well as that you could look at um, making your CV format PDF. So once you are sending in your application, um, you might find that the format changes once you send it through to someone else's computer. So PDF formats, um, quite good. So the most, most important thing when you're creating your CV is to keep the format neat and tidy, keep the information concise and factual. One of those things, um, and I come across it quite often, is when individuals say that they are very detail orientated or have a strong eye for detail, but yet I come across numerous uh, spelling and grammar mistakes. So please ensure you use spell check and proofread your CV before you're sending it out. I think other things to consider when you're doing a CV, and a question that I actually often get asked, is about whether to include a photo. I personally recommend not to include a photo. I think it's unnecessary for your skills. If you do decide to use a photo, make sure that it's appropriate to the company that you're applying for, that it's not too casual, and that you're smartly dressed within it. A photo should be about a headshot of something that you would look like if you were to turn up for an interview. However, it's a lot easier not to have a photo and everyone's got LinkedIn these days, so that's a good shortcut. I think something else to consider with your CV and is very important is spell checking. If you need to get someone to read over your CV and double, triple check that everything is in line, especially if you're going to describe yourself as an accurate person, don't misspell the word accurate. It's never a good look. And if you've been working, it's always really helpful to see if that's been part-time or full-time work or if it was over the holidays. Sometimes it looks like you've been holding a full-time job down while you've been studying two or three different degrees and it's really confusing. One of the things that I think can trip people up on the CV is having a photo. Um, once again, it's your decision whether you do so. But if you're going to have one, don't make it a selfie in front of the bathroom mirror. Make it a professional shot. The reason I don't personally think uh, photos are good on CVs is that whoever's reviewing it without even thinking about it might have already judged you before they've even had a chance to look at what you can bring to the role this um, sense of um, unconscious bias. So uh, my recommendation is no, but once again, it's your CV, so you decide whether you want to do that or not. One other tip that um, for your CV, and it just sounds really silly, but just make sure your contact details are really easy to spot. Um, we, we're going through, you, the recruiter needs to get through things pretty quickly, so they need to be able to um, contact you. Um, so make sure those are really clear on your CV. First and foremost, please proofread it. Um, if you say in your skills section that you've got great attention to detail, but then we come down and we see um, spelling mistakes or punctuation errors, it kind of um, doesn't really match up. Um, so you could you could get your family and friends to proofread it for you if you didn't feel you know confident in, in that. Um, formatting is really important. So if we see a CV that's well formatted, it will immediately put us into a more positive frame of mind because it's easy to read, it's clear and well structured. And um, thirdly, put in your personality. Because we do get so many CVs across our desks every day, if you can put your personality in there, it will help you stand out from everyone else. Um, so for example, uh, we had one candidate put on her CV um, that she plays kayak polo and immediately we were like, what, what is that? We've never heard of it before. So, you know, we were immediately intrigued and wanted to get her in to see what it was, how much involvement she had with it and, um, and why she went there in the first place.